Let's have a look at how to care for Monstera deliciosa variegata. Let's start with soil. In terms of soil, Monstera deliciosa variegata needs well-draining soil. Well-draining soil is soil where you use chunky bits to add additional drainage, so water is draining really well and there's no puddles of water remaining in the pot. What you can use for a well-draining soil mix is aeroid um, soil. Aeroid soil is, is a mix of uh, different ingredients. What uh, is usually used is orchid bark, charcoal, perlite, peat moss. All these substances, all these ingredients work well because they add drainage. They are chunky, they loosen up the soil and they make sure that water is draining quickly through the pot. So, but as I said in the beginning, I'm growing this um, plant hydroponically. This means that I'm using a non-organic soil for growing Monstera Deliciosa. I'm using these uh, Leca or Hydroton balls. I'm going to show you uh, right here. The big advantage is that they add a lot of drainage. So water can easily flow through the pot and also air can flow through the potting substrate. So Leca works really great. I'm going to tell you how exactly I'm uh, growing it uh, using Leca. So what I'm using is a um, ebb and flow system. These pots on the Monstera Deliciosa sits in an upper basin and uh, there's a lower basin as well that contains all the water. And then there's a, a water pump. Every couple of hours floats the, the upper basin and water gets to the roots and the plant is watered. After that, the, the water drains away again. And after three to four hours, there's another flood where water and also nutrients are getting to the roots of the Monstera Deliciosa. This is how I'm currently um, keeping this plant, but also I'm growing a few uh, using, just as I mentioned in the beginning, a chunky aeroid mix, which works great. In the beginning, when I just bought this plant, I just used regular potting soil and this was a disaster. Like every couple of weeks, uh, at least, like I had yellow leaves, I had to check the roots and um, I had to see that the roots are mushy, they're brown, and I saw first signs of root rot. So what I did or what I had to do is to just snip off uh, the mushy roots and um, replace the potting soil and I was ready to go again, but it really stunts the growth of the plant and can entirely kill your Monstera Deliciosa if your potting soil is too compact and too dense. So don't use just general uh, houseplant potting soil. It's not gonna work for an aroid because aroids are epiphytes. This means that they're growing on other plants and also objects such as rocks. Their um, roots need constant aeration, so air needs to be flowing uh, through the pot. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to show you right here as well. I put these little holes into the pot. What these are doing is that they allow air circulation, so there's less chance of, uh, of root rot. That works really, really great. And I'm doing this because the plant is in a hydroponic system. You wouldn't have to do it if you grow it in aeroid soil, but you can do it um, to increase aeration. The big disadvantage of these holes is, of course, that the soil is draining out uh, quite quickly and is getting dry, so you have to water the plant more often. Let's move on to, to light to lighting. What this uh, plant loves is bright indirect light. So light that is not shining directly onto the leaves because otherwise you might have uh, issues with sunburn. I can show you here this leaf. I had to cut it off as well as, as this one has some browning at the tip. It got crispy because there was uh, too much sunlight shining onto the plant and the leaves are going to get brown and, and black rather quickly. So you have to be careful with direct light few hours of direct light uh, in the morning is fine, it's absolutely no problem. I recommend east or west facing windows, uh, a south facing window as an example, there would be too much light and you would have to train your Monstera Deliciosa and also keep it uh, way away from uh, your window and also maybe use something to protect it from the sun from the window. So bright indirect light is the name of the game here. That works really well for Monstera Deliciosa. Watering. So uh, Monstera deliciosa needs uh, quite a lot of water. They need more water in spring and summer where the main growth phase is. So I water mine about once a week. 
these are the ones that are not in the hydroponic system. In the hydroponic system, they are watered four or five times a day, can you imagine? And there's no signs of root rot because there's a lot of great drainage and the water is going away completely. About once a week is fine. As you can imagine, these are growing in rainforests. There's a lot of rain falling almost daily. So watering often is no problem as, as long as it drains away. So when you water, water it heavily. Some people um, just put their Monstera Deliciosa into the shower and water them and also give the, the leaves a good spritz. Um, that works, that's no problem. Just make sure that the water is flowing right through and within two or max three days, like um, it shouldn't be like wet at all, um, just slightly humid, that's how you want to have it. And then you can water again once the top two inches, like five centimeters of soil, when you put your index finger into it is, is dry, that's when you should water again. Do not water too much, you risk root rot that way. In terms of um, temperature, so moving on to temperatures, again 65 degrees to 80 degrees Fahrenheit is uh, perfect for Monstera Deliciosa variegata. Uh, that's uh, about 18 degrees to 27 degrees Celsius. Humidity. Humidity is a great uh, topic. I have a lot of experience with different uh, percentage values of uh, humidity because I'm using a growth tent. I also have some of the plants in closed plastic containers and um, I have a terrarium as well. And what I observed is like the higher the humidity is, the more you will see, I'm going to show you right here, the more you will see that air roots are growing. Like if the humidity is really high, like 80-90%, you will see air roots just coming out everywhere and helping the plant to attach. I mean, this is great, but you can't just provide that in your regular living room. But that's no problem. Um, as long as the humidity is above 40%, I think you're fine. I would recommend 50 to 60. I recommend using a humidifier, put it close, but not too close to your uh, house plant. What you don't want is that the leaves of Monstera Deliciosa are constantly wet. They would rot and uh, wilt and your plant might die. You also need uh, good air circulation if you have increased humidity. Uh, as mentioned, the plant uh, needs to dry and the leaves especially need to dry in between these phases where you have a lot of humidity. Yeah, I'm, I'm using a, a humidifier and works great. Propagation. This is fun with Monstera Deliciosa variegata. Quite easy to propagate. Um, what you always need is a node. I'm going to show you again. Um, this is a node section. It's usually where the air roots are. Here you see a, a node. It's like a section of the stem. You definitely need part of the stem. You need a node. To propagate this plant. If you have a leaf with the cutting that's also great because this way it's going to be way easier and way faster to propagate but what you absolutely need is a node. So you can um, grow a cutting directly in, in water. Just exchange the water every couple of days, every week is fine. It shouldn't get old and bad because um, once it's like foul smelling it might rot the, the plant. You should just observe that. And also important is once you take a stem cutting of Monstera Deliciosa, let it callous over. So you almost can say like it needs to dry and, and build some kind of film over the part that you cut. This way it will not rot once you put it in water. My favorite medium for propagation besides water is sphagnum moss. So sphagnum moss works really great for propagation. Just make it wet, put it in your fist and um, drench it and once you've drenched it, it has the correct humidity for propagating a cutting. Just make sure it's not completely moist. You need to wet it in the beginning and it will expand, but it should never stay very moist because also root rot is quite common in sphagnum moss. But sphagnum moss has a lot of great properties and I think it's also antibacterial, so it works perfect for propagation. This actually is a propagated plant that's why it's not that big yet but it's growing quite well. Growth. So um, Monstera Deliciosa can grow up to 10 feet and I guess even much much higher uh, if it can climb and attach to uh, something. So what I'm providing here is a uh, moss pole. I built that myself. How you can do it is you take a chicken wire. It can either be metal or plastic 
and you just wrap it uh, around some sphagnum moss and this gives you a, a nice uh, pole where air roots can set into. I'm just going to show you here again. This air root here uh, went completely through the sphagnum moss, through the pole and uh, attaches the plant perfectly. Because this way uh, you will get bigger and bigger leaves, you will get slits and also holes much faster because your plant is going to mature as it grows. The higher it grows and the more mature it's getting, the thicker the stem is going to be. So I would say you almost need a, a moss pole or some kind of structure for your Monstero Delicioso Varigata to grow. Otherwise it's gonna look really flimsy, it's gonna grow into all directions, it's just gonna look like some kind of um, bush and also the, the leaves are not going to split, they're gonna be whole and it's not even gonna look like a Monstero Delicioso. So use a pole, some kind of totem for this plant. Potting. So in, in terms of potting, what you need to be careful is to not use a, a very big pot. The smaller the better almost. Um, once you pot this plant up, this is something you might need to do every a year or two or even every half a year if uh, the growth is, is really quickly and rapid with Monstera Deliciosa. But just choose a pot one inch to two inches. So two and a half to five centimeters bigger each time in, in diameter because this way your plant is not going to grow roots uh, forever and also it's going to be much easier for you to water the plant. So use a rather small planter. These plants are epiphytes so they grow on top of other plants and they can but they don't have to uh, root into a, a substrate that much so you don't need a lot of substrate. I can also show you the roots here because um, as I mentioned I grow this plant hydroponically. It's just going to touch the ceiling. So as you can see here, these are the roots. The roots look rather white here. This is because the roots are mostly in water. When you grow them in water, they will develop as they are called water roots and these are completely white. When you grow it in the soil, the roots are more brown. They shouldn't be dark brown or black because usually that's when they are moldy and rotting away. Yeah, so let's talk about roots for a second. So in water, um, they're going to be completely white. They're going to be a different kind of roots compared to when, when you grow it in soil. So if you propagate Monstera Deliciosa in water, um, it will develop water roots. Once you want to transfer Monstera Deliciosa from water to soil, there is a transition necessary. And it's always a moment where your plant is at risk because it has to change the the kind of roots it has. Also, if you put it from soil into water, the brown parts are going uh, away and it will develop completely white roots. So these um, transitions are always a, a moment where you need a lot of attention and see if everything is uh, going right. Because at that point you might lose your plant if it fails to transform its roots. That's why some growers prefer to grow cuttings directly in soil or sphagnum moss. I think sphagnum moss uh, will be um, a mix between soil and water roots, something in between. But that's an argument for propagating Monstera deliciosa directly in soil, because otherwise you always have to transfer them. But that's not a big issue or problem. Usually it works quite uh, well as long as your soil is well draining. Yeah, we could also talk about variegation. So in terms of variegation, they are um, very variable. So one leaf uh, might have a lot of uh, white or a bit more white. Um, the next one can be almost completely green. And the third one has like a different pattern of variegation. It really uh, changes all the time. Once you are at a point where it's producing almost white leaves, what you can do is you just cut it back to the section where there was a, a mix between white and green and hopefully the new growth will be a nice combination. Also, if it's reverting, as, as people say, if it's completely green, you can also cut it back and in most cases you will get variegation as well. There's more and more variegated plants and, and less variegated Monstera Deliciosas. I prefer the ones with still a good amount of healthy green because this way you have a good growth and you also don't have the danger that your Monstera deliciosa is going to uh, die because the green parts are the parts that contain the chlorophyll and this is necessary for photosynthesis. This is necessary for producing the sugars for Monstera deliciosa to 
grow. So I'm not unhappy if they are not completely white or very, very white. Yeah, Monstero Deliciosa Variegata is like one of my all-time favorite uh, houseplants. I think I can never have enough uh, of them. Let's talk about pricing for a second. So I have many different houseplants and houseplant prices have come down considerably in the last two years. They also have gone up extremely in the last two years during the pandemic and prices went just crazy. What I think about Monstera Deliciosa Variegata prices is they've been uh, quite constant. So these plants usually range between 70 and 250 dollars, really depending on the variegation and also the size of the plant, but they haven't gone up uh, crazy during the pandemic and also they haven't come down uh, extremely much. So it's really stable in terms of pricing. And it can also be like a good investment. You can cut back this plant two or three times a year and you could either gift or sell the cuttings and you will get back your initial investment. The way I like to do it is I just like to grow it or if I do a cutting I use it for myself because I just love to see Monstera Deliciosa grow bigger because they just look stunning and for me this is the um, number one plant and um, that gives me this jungle um, holiday vibe. These split leaves uh, cannot be compared with anything else. It's also a big time favorite in home decor for uh, the last 40 to 50 years. So it never goes out of trend. Yeah, pests. I had some issues with uh, pests. Um, I'm gonna tell you what kind of pests I already had on Monstera Deliciosa Variegata. So I had um, issues with scale. So scale uh, are usually brown to reddish uh, little insects um, they often attach to the stems and also the underside of the leaves where the um, midrib is and, and the ribs are they have like a, a thick shell around them and they hardly ever move so at first it's hard to identify that you really have scale but once you know how they look it's quite easy the good thing about scale is that um, they're not moving so they're very easy to remove uh, they can get quite plentiful if you're not acting. What I'm using is a cotton swab with a mix of uh, alcohol and water, uh, almost like a 50-50 mix, and I just swap them off because the alcohol is going to destroy the shell of uh, the scale, and this way you can get rid of them. I also had um, instances of mealybugs. So mealybugs, they almost look like um, some kind of dust uh, on the leaves. First you think, oh, why is it so dusty? And then you, you have a look with a microscope and you realize it is a pest. Mealybugs are easy to remove, like you can do it with your hands. If you're grossed out, you just take uh, something else like a napkin and you can just take them off um, but they're also quite pesky, so um, they come back and um, they're usually in large numbers. So it takes some time to get, um, get the mealy box uh, off. The worst of the worst uh, are the thrips, as always. I'm gonna tell you how you spot them. They're quite small, so what you usually see is a discoloration in the leaves. Especially on the uh, upper side of the leaf, it's going to look uh, brownish. It's almost like it's sunburned, but it has like a distinctive color and uh, once you see that you can almost be sure that you have trips. Then uh, what you should check is on the underside of the leaves, trips are moving not extremely fast but you see them moving there um, look like tips of pencils um, then they're black and longish in the most cases and yeah you can spot them you can uh, just squeeze them or use a cotton swab with alcohol to get rid of them but there's not just the um, adult thrips um, that look black. There's also the larvae that are white and um, both of them are really, really small and uh, in the beginning you will not spot them. It's good to uh, use a microscope or really look very closely to see the thrips. The only thing that ever works for me, to be honest, are the uh, beneficial nematodes. I'm gonna show you here. There's different producers of these, but this one is Ambiseus uh, Swirsky. They come in these little sachets. Um, you just put them on the plant uh, they will be good for a couple of weeks. I use them for like three or four weeks and then I try to replace them. You can also use them as a preventative measure before you see any thrips or other pests and they work quite great. The good thing is it's completely ecological so you don't need to use any chemicals uh, which is a big plus. They're not extremely cheap but I just love the notion or idea of having some great helpers on my plants, uh, killing the, the pests, as you will. Yeah, that's it about Monstera Deliciosa Variegata. 
and I try to grow as many as possible and I want to let them climb as high as possible so I can get these huge split leaves. I also have one now that um, has flowered three times and is growing fruit on it. The fruits are said to be really delicious and I would just love to, to eat one and maybe I can show you in one of the next videos. Thank you so much for watching as always and please, if you don't mind, take the time and subscribe to our channel, like our videos and also um, leave a comment. It would mean the world to us. Thank you so much for watching and all your support. Bye.